Okay, so you'll notice that the uh, words I've just typed in there um, haven't been identified as misspelled. So we're going into the backstage view of um, Microsoft Word to adjust one of the settings. So we're going through the file tab. We're going down to options. Now, if you have a look down the left hand side, we want to go to proofing. Now, the area I want you to look at, do you see where it says ignore words in uppercase? There's a little tick in there. I'm going to remove that tick, okay? And I would advise you all to do this on your own Microsoft Word application because you could be sitting typing like a CV in or something and sending it out and think, going, well, putting a spell check over it and thinking everything's in order. And it's not if that tick is in the box. So I'm going to okay that. And do you notice now, see the spell check on it? It has identified it, okay? So that's one thing I want you all to, um, as I say, adjust at some stage on your own machine. Okay, now the other thing I'm going to get you to um, adjust is the default, the default settings in Microsoft Word. I don't know about you, but I find it really, I suppose, annoying uh, the way Microsoft have changed the default line spacing and paragraph spacing in Microsoft Word. And I'll show you exactly what I'm meaning here. So I'm gonna just delete that text that I've typed in there. Now, so I'm gonna, um, there's somebody coming in. Hi, Maura, you're welcome. Right, so I'm going to key in a wee code in Microsoft Word here in just a new blank document. Now, equal R-A-N-D, and that's short for random, open bracket, and I'm going to use the number six, comma, six, close bracket. Now, the first six simply means six sentences, and the second paragraph or second six means six paragraphs. So I'm going to press the enter key and watch what happens. Okay, so that's just a wee built in code on your computers that will generate text in Microsoft Word. Now, do you notice the line spacing here? Can you see it's not single line spacing, and there's um, spacing between paragraphs. Now, I have to say, I don't like that. Now, that's one of the first things that I would change um, a default setting in Microsoft Word. Now, the other thing as well, you'll notice that the font, the default font is sitting at Calibri. Now, again, I don't want Calibri as my default font. So, we're going to apply changes um, so that any new documents that we uh, create will have the changes that we want. Now, I'm going to click on the little dialogue launcher at the bottom right of the font group here. So if I click on that, that brings up my little font dialogue. Right, I'm going to change my default font to Arial. So if I type A, all the fonts begin with A will appear. I'm going to do A, R, I, okay. And I'm going to choose Arial. Size 11, that's perfect. That's what I want to use. And I'm going to choose at the very bottom. Do you see where it says set as default? So I'm going to click set as default. Now, I have two choices here. This document only or all documents based on the normal template. Well, it's a complete and utter waste of time if I just choose this document only because I would have to go in and do this for any new documents. So the option we're going to choose is all documents based on the normal template. Choose that option. OK that. Notice how my font has changed. Do you notice that? Now, my line spacing, I don't like my line spacing. So this time we're going to the paragraph group. We're going to click on the wee dialog launcher at the bottom right of the paragraph group. Now, notice that the spacing 
after is sitting at eight points. I'm going to change that. I'm simply going to overtype. Okay, I've just highlighted that. I'm going to overtype to zero. And if we look at line spacing, the line spacing is sitting at 1.15. I don't want that either. I'm going to click on the down arrow to the right of multiple. I'm going to say I want that at single. Now, like the font that we did earlier, we're going to choose the option where it says set as default. And again, all documents based on the normal template. And OK that. Now, watch my, do you see how my text has changed, my font and my paragraph spacing? Now, if I undo that twice, do you see the difference? Now, I'm going to undo here from my quick access toolbar. Notice the difference. That's before and that's after. Do you see a difference? Now, if I open a new blank document, my font will be my Arial and my spacing will be the single line spacing with no spacing between paragraphs. Okay. Now, that's changing the default. And again, that's one of the first things that I would actually do. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to look at a few shortcuts that you can use in Microsoft Word. So, first things first, I want to select all my text. Now, imagine I have 40 pages of text. I'm not going to manually use my mouse to highlight. I'm going to use a shortcut. Now, most of the shortcut keys are used along with the control key. So I'm going to hold the control key down and I'm going to press the letter A. Control and A is select all. And it's probably not going to let me do it when oh, it is now. I thought it wasn't going to let me do it when it was live. So control and A is select all. Now, if I press any key at this point, let's say I press my space bar. Okay, your text will disappear. Now, if I want to undo that, rather than using the undo from the quick access toolbar, I'm going to use the shortcut control and Z. Okay, so control and Z is undo. Now, we're going to look at um, shortcuts for basically the alignment of our text. Now, notice that text as you type in is automatically aligned to the left hand side with what's called a ragged right margin. So let's say I want to right align my text. Maybe I'm doing a, a personal letter and I want to um, put my uh, address on the right hand side of the page. Well, the first letter of the word right is R. So it's control and R to right align. If I want to left align again, I'm going to do control and L. If I want to justify my text where it's nice and even over at the right hand side, control and J, justify. Now, if I want to center my text, you all know that the shortcut for copy is control and C. So therefore, I cannot use control and C as center. So the shortcut for center is the last letter of the word in this case. So that's control and the letter E. And that will center your text. Let's say I want my text in double line spacing. I'm going to do control and the number two just at the top of the keyboard. Double line spacing. If I want a back single, control and one. If I want, say, one and a half line spacing, control one, your decimal point, and five, control 1.5. Now I'm going to left line my text again, control and L. Okay, uh, put it back to single line spacing. All right, now I'm going to delete my text. Now I'm going to ask a question here. If I type the word hello in, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase the font size. Now, folks, 
in the newer versions of Microsoft Word, Microsoft have brought different tools up onto the ribbon for ease of use. Now, they have the increase font uh, command now. So instead of me going to my font size box, I'm going to my increase font size to increase the font or the size of my font. So I'm going to make that say about a size 36. And let's say I want to make that bold. I'm going to use a shortcut, control and B for bold. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. If I have text highlighted, does it matter whether I use my delete key or my backspace key um, to delete the text? What do you think? I'm going to unmute you all for a second. <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot. I would have thought it was the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody think any different? I'm not trying to catch anybody out here, okay? There is a difference. There is a difference. And people don't realize there is a difference, okay? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute you all again for a wee second. Okay. You can un unmute yourselves at any time, folks. Now, what I'm going to do here, okay, I'm going to highlight the word hello. Now, I'm going to use the backspace key to delete it. All right, and then I'm going to type my name. What's happened? The formatting has retained, isn't it? It deleted the text, but it retained the formatting. I'm going to undo that, Control and Z to undo. Now, this time, instead of using the backspace key, I'm going to use the delete key. So if I press delete, and then I go to type my name. So does that tell you there is a difference in using your backspace key and your delete key if your text is highlighted? Always use your delete key if your text is highlighted and that will remove your formatting as well as the actual text itself. Okay, now again, just some of the um, shortcuts for formatting our text. I use the shortcut Control and B for bolding, obviously Control and I for italic, Control and U for underline. Okay, those are standard ones. Now, again, I'm going to delete that. Now, I'm going to key in my wee shortcut again, equal round open bracket. Now, I'm going to use smaller numbers this time. I'm going to say two comma two, which means two sentences, two paragraphs. Close bracket, press the enter key. Now, I'm going to highlight my text. Let's say you're one of these people that put your cap locks on um, for doing one capital letter. You're not looking what you're doing and then you think, oh crap, I've just left. I've just put everything in uppercase, didn't mean to do it. So from the font group here, you have a little command here, change case. So if you click on that, you have the different options, sentence case, lowercase, uppercase, capitalize each word and toggle. We'll just have a, a quick look at these. Right, so if I choose uppercase, obviously it's putting everything in caps for me. I'm gonna go back. Let's say I want lowercase, not a capital, capital letter to be seen. I'm gonna go back, sentence case will capitalize the first letter of each sentence without you having to do it. Um, Capitalize each word. That's really useful if you've been maybe typing names in, first names, surnames, and um, somebody's maybe not capitalized the surname. That's a good way of doing it. Capitalize each word. Now, the last one here, the toggle case is literally where it will give you a lowercase first letter and everything else in uppercase. Now, the only time I have ever seen that used is in like a poster 
a wanted poster or stuff like that. It would never be used in ordinary everyday business life. Now, I'm going to go back to shortcuts. OK, so if I want to change case, let's say I'm sitting typing on the keyboard and I want to use a shortcut for changing case. If I use my shift key and the F3 key at the top of the keyboard, I'm going to press, hold my shift key down, press F3, watch what happens. F3, F3. Do you see the way it toggles between three cases? So lower case, sentence case, and upper case. So that's the shortcut. That's the shift key and the F3 key will do that for you. Um, as well as going to the change case button here. I mentioned the increase and decrease uh, font from here. And again, try and get into the habit if you're not already using those, to use those for increasing and decreasing your font size. Now, the next thing we're gonna have a look at is numbering in Microsoft Word. So I'm gonna delete that. I'm going to key in my equal RAM thing again, and I'm going to add a wee bit more text. So let's say I want to say 8 comma 8. So it's equal RAM, open bracket, 8 comma 8, close bracket, and press the enter key. Okay. Now, okay, shortcut. If you have a document and you're at the very end of the document, let's say it's a long document, what you can use, hold down your control key and press the home key. The home key, you will have six little keys on the keyboard um, together. Usually the insert, delete, home, end, page up and page down are normally located on a standard keyboard. So control and home will take you back to the beginning of the document. Control and end will take you to the end of the document. So. I'm going to do control and home. For those of you that are using um, the laptops for Microsoft Word, sometimes you'll have to use the function key along with the shortcut keys. The function key is the FN key, um, particularly the uh, F1 keys, F1 to F12 keys at the top. Uh, for the laptop, a lot of you will have to use the function key for those as well. Now, what we're going to do here, we're going to highlight all our text. And again, I've just used my Control and A to select all. Now, I'm going back to the paragraph group here. And I'm going to use my standard numbering command, the wee one, two, three. So if I click on that, now, that will number automatically number uh, my paragraphs. Now, the one thing you will notice, if you have a look at my ruler bar here, now again, I'm just going to drag this to one side, your ruler bar is not displayed by default. So that's another, another tool I would get you to actually apply. Now, the ruler bar, if you go to your view tab, you have from the show group, you have a little ruler box, put a little tick in that box and that will apply the ruler, both your horizontal and vertical ruler. Okay, so I've got my ruler. Now, if I have a look, you'll notice that when I apply that standard, that standard numbering, okay, it indents my numbers. Do you see from the margin a bit? Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say, paragraph three is a sub paragraph of paragraph two. Now I'm not going to renumber paragraph three. I'm going to let Word do it for me the easiest way possible. Now what I want you to look at, we're on the paragraph group here. We have two commands at the top of the paragraph group. The first one here is called decrease indent. The next one over is called increase indent. Okay, now if I click on the increase indent, my cursor is in the third paragraph here. 
or the paragraph that's number three. I've nothing highlighted, but the cursor is flashing here. So I'm gonna click increase indent. What's happened? Do you notice the A appearing? So it literally is shown as a subparagraph of paragraph two. And notice how the numbers renumber themselves. So again, if I click into the new paragraph, that is now number three. And if I say increase indent, notice that it will appear A and B. That okay? Now, I'm going to undo both of those. Control and Z, Control and Z, Control and Z. And I'm doing that to remove the numbering that I have applied. So I'm going to introduce you to another set of numbering. Now, these are really, really good. Any of you that are using, um, doing Microsoft Word documents like reports or that sort of thing and are using um, multi-level numbering, you'll find this really, really useful, folks. So from the paragraph group, we used the standard numbering option last time. The next button over is called multi-level list. So I'm going to click on that. Now, the option I'm going to choose from the list library is the third one over where it's 1, 1 1.1, etc. So if I click on that, now you're going to look at that and say, well, so what? What's different? Now, note the margin. Your numbers are in line with the margin. They're not indented like the previous number that we did. OK, so that's actually quite useful. but. If I click this time in paragraph number three, and let's say I want to make it a subparagraph of paragraph two, again, I'm going to use the increase indent button. Now watch, do you see the number? 2.1. Right, let's say paragraph three, you need to click in the paragraph first. Let's say this paragraph is a subparagraph of 2.1. So this time, I'm going to use the option to increase indent twice, once, twice. Now, watch how this has been renumbered. So we have 2, 2.1, and 2.11. Now, you'll notice that the first line here is hanging a wee bit. Now, you might say, I don't like the look of that. Well, I'm going to show you how to fix that quite easily. So if you right click on the number, go to adjust list indents option. And then from the text indent at, increase that up a wee bit. It's currently at 2.16. If I take it up to say 2.3 and okay that, Watch how the paragraph all aligns nice and tidy under each other. Folks, that is really, really useful. Now, the one thing I will say to you, if you're producing a document in Microsoft Word, key it in first. Don't try a number, type a paragraph in, try and number it, and then type another one in and try a number, because that's where things start to go wrong, okay? Type your text in first, then highlight if you're doing the likes of numbering, it's the easiest way of doing it, folks. So you can try that yourselves um, once you get the link to the uh, tonight's training. So happy enough of that. Right, Control A to select all and press the delete key. I'm just clearing what we've done here, okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is a wee list. So I'm going to say John, Anne, Mark, James, Niall, and Robert. Now, I want to see those in alphabetical order. So we're going to highlight again from the paragraph group. I'm going to go up to me A to Z, sort. If I click on that, I'll get my little sort text box up. I have an option to sort whether it's ascending or descending. I'm going to choose the ascending and simply OK that. 
and notice how everything is sorted in alphabetical order. We'll do it with numeric data and whatnot as well. Okay, so something as simple as that, some people don't even realize that that's there. So, I'm going to press the delete key. Now, another thing that people um, tend to do in Microsoft Word, they literally will um, use when doing like column text, they will use their space bar to align text. Now, I'm going to unmute you all a wee second. You can tell me, um, are you all guilty of it or not? How many of you would be guilty if you're aligning text, say, in columns? How many of you would be guilty of using your space bar? Yep. Shout. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll never get you'll never get your text completely aligned. So you'll not if you're using your space bar. At the very least, use your tab key. Now, I'll just show you. We'll click here, and I'm going to say name. Now, if I'm doing it wrong, as I'm going to do initially, I'm going to use some space bar. Okay. So if I say name and say, um, well, we'll say town. And again, I'm using the space bar. And we'll say email, okay? Press the enter key and let's say I want to start adding stuff on there. Now, I get documents sent to me all the time. And, you know, people will have been using their space bar for aligning things. And they're maybe asking me to change things. Now, the first thing I will do, folks, and you're going to get into the habit of doing this as well. From the paragraph group, can you see the little show hide? It's like a wee back to front P. Mm -hmm. So if I click on that, that shows me the person has used their space bar. You see that? See all those wee dots? Mm -hmm. That indicates each of those is basically each time you've used your space bar. Now, that's actually quite useful because sometimes when you're doing a document, and um, we'll say today, and let's say it was a good day, right? So if I did the likes of that, and I'm thinking to myself, what the hell's wrong with that? I didn't do any spelling, okay? You've got a blue line there to indicate that there's something wrong. Now, without me right-clicking, I can right-click and it'll adjust or it'll give me a suggestion as to what's wrong and how I can fix it. But if I put my show hide on, do you see the way there's two wee dots there? Here, I'll just zoom this up a wee bit. Mm -hmm. There's two wee dots there between today and was, yeah. which means I've pressed my space bar twice instead of just once. So that's, that's where that's quite useful for checking things. Um, I would tend to switch that on as well to check paragraph spacing. So, for example, if I was doing um, paragraph one. Okay, and let's say if a pile of these and I'm thinking, is my spacing right? I would put my show hide on and you have one paragraph mark between your your paragraphs that's what you should have no more than that um so i'm going to switch that off again so i'm going to go back to tabs so we did uh, three columns uh, just in the last week example we had name we had town and email okay now i'm going to do exactly the same thing i'm going to say name now, this time I'm going to press my tab key. Now, your tab key, as you all know, is the one above your cap locks. So I'm going to press it about three times. I'm going to type town. Okay, and then I'll say email. Now, watch as I put my show hide on. Do you see the difference? Do you see your little arrows? The arrows indicate that I have used my tab key. Now, I get documents, as I say, sent to me left, right and centre, where people have, where they should have been using their tab, they've been using their um, space bar. So that's the first thing I'll do, switch the show hide on, say, right, what have these people been using? Have they been using their space bar or have they been using their tab key? Now, 
I'm going to knock the show hide off a wee second. So if I press the enter key, um, I'm going to mute you all a wee second. Okay. Um, so I'm on the uh, row below my heading. So we'll say, right, Joe Blogs. Now, okay. Okay, so my tab will make sure everything is aligned correctly under the headings that I have in. If you're using your space bar, at some point in your list, it'll start going skew. It'll not work. Okay, now that's using your tab, that's using your preset tab. But I'm going to show you another way of using a tab. Now, let's say I want to do like a price list or I maybe want to do like a phone directory where you have an item on the left hand side of the screen and maybe a price or a phone number on the right hand side and you have what's called leaders which are little dots that guide your eye across the page. So that's what we're going to do initially. Now I'm going to go to the paragraph group here. I'll do a wee price list say. If we click on the wee dialogue launcher at the bottom right of the paragraph group, at the very bottom, you have a command there that says tabs. So I'm going to click on that. Now, this opens up my tab uh, tabs dialog box. Your default tab stop is sitting at 1.27. I never, ever, ever would change the 1.27. Because if I need to do temporary tabs, I use my own tabs and then it'll always default back to the 1.27. Now, looking, I'm going to zoom out a wee bit again here. Oops, I'll cancel that, sorry. <clears throat> looking at my page and my ruler bar. Okay, right. I'm going to be putting an item on the left hand side here. And let's say, I'm sort of, I'm just going by eye. Let's say I want to put a price over, say, about 13 on the ruler bar. Is that all right? So if I go back to my um, dialogue launcher at the paragraph group, go to tabs, I'm going to type in 13. Okay. Now, I'm going to be putting prices in at the right hand side here. Okay. So I'm going to be using decimal places. So I'm going to set the alignment here as decimal. Now, the other thing I'm going to use are what's called leaders. Now, leaders are little dashes or dots that help guide your eye across the page. Now, again, these are a personal choice. Number two are dots. Number three are dashes. And number four are underscores. I'm going to use number two, the wee dots. Now, if you're setting more than one tab stop. You would click on the set command. You would then enter your second one and set again, um, whatever number, and set. But because I'm only setting one tab stop, I don't have to use the word set. I can go straight in and say, OK. Now, if you look at the ruler bar, do you see up at number 13, you have a little tab stop. See that? It's like an upside down T with a dot on it. Now, my cursor is flashing at the left hand side of the page. So I'm going to type the word in T, as in T-E-A. I'm going to press the tab key once. Watch how my little dots, my little leaders. I'm going to type my pound sign. I'm going to say T is 50p. Press the enter key. So we'll say coffee and tab. Now, at this point, you'll think it doesn't look right, but it's my decimals that are going to line up. So I'm going to type the pound sign in and I'm going to say coffee is 75. Press the enter key. I'm going to say orange juice. Okay, tab. And we'll say orange juice is 120. And then we'll say steak and chips. Now, this is the full work, so it's going to be, what, twelve ninety five. So tab, pound sign. Now, do you notice the pound signs aren't lining up? It's the decimal points that are aligning, 
okay, because I've used a decimal tab. Now, I could have used a left tab there, and if I had, the pounds would actually have all uh, aligned up. So, that all right? Are you all okay with that? Now, if I decide mm, my tabs could go over a bit more to the right hand side, what you need to do, you need to highlight, okay, the tabbed text. Now, if I bring my pointer up onto the ruler bar, actually on the tab stop on the ruler bar, I'm going to click and hold and I can drag that to the right hand side. You see the way my text is moving over? So if I want to pull it over or if I want to pull it back, I can pull it back a bit closer. So that's setting the likes of a tab stop where you have leaders and decimals. That all right? Okay. Now that's your tabs. Now I know I'm trying to cram a lot in, but I want I want you all to sort of see what you can do in Microsoft Word. Tables is the next one. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a couple of wee tricks with tables. Now, for creating a table, this is straightforward. Insert. Go to the table command. Now, generally, if I was creating a small table, I would use these. Okay, for the bigger tables, I would tend to go to insert table. And let's say I was doing 50 columns and 20 rows. I would tend to use that for the bigger ones. But for the ordinary standard ones, I would tend to use this. Now, if like me, when you're creating a table, you know how many columns you need, but you never know how many rows you need until you're going along. So what I'm going to do, sorry, I have a wee table beside me here. Um, I'm going to say one, two, three, four. Okay, four columns. So I'm going to say um, name, department, um, age, and we'll say um, telephone. Now, if I want to create my next row, I simply press my tab key from the end, and that creates my new row. So using the tab key to create your rows as you go along, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open a table that I have already set up here, okay? Um, just bear with me one wee second till I get this table and I will share it with you now. Okay, you all see that? Yep, right. This is basically a table. Now, that's how your table would look if you went to insert table, okay? You would have what's called fixed columns. Now, as I type in, I have literally not adjusted any of my column widths at all. Now, let's say I want to tidy this up. Now, this is where people start getting messy. They start dragging columns to adjust column widths. Okay, now you're gonna love this. I promise you'll love this. Click anywhere at all inside your table. No dragon needed. Now, when you add an object into any of the applications, whether it be Word, Excel, PowerPoint, whatever, you get what's called contextual tabs, on-demand tabs that relate to the object that you've put in. So these tabs at the end, Okay, these are your table tools, design and layout. You have two options for working with your table. The design is really for your appearance. Layout is for everything else. I'm going to go to layout. Now, can you see the option where it says auto fit? I'm going to choose auto fit. Now, bear in mind, my cursor must be in the table. Otherwise, I don't get these commands or these tabs, sorry. So I'm gonna say auto fit contents. Why would I sit and drag when it does it for me? Now, the only thing it does, it literally adjusts each column to the exact width it needs. But it will literally, let's say for example, if I delete this last column, I'm gonna bring my pointer just above a wee black arrow and I'm gonna click on that last column. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna say delete column. Now, my table's fine 
but I have more space on my page to the right hand side. So I really want my table to fit the full way across my page. And again, I'm not going to drag any columns. Auto fit, say auto fit window. Not good. Two clicks without dragging tidies it up. Now, I've got my table here, okay? So if I scroll down, my table is running uh, onto two pages. I have headings on page one. I want my headings at the top of every page uh, or at the top of the table on every page. Now, this will only work if it's a continuous table. If there's a split in the table, this will not work. So if you have a continuous table, maybe it's running across three, four, five pages, you want the headings at the top of each page. What you do is go back to the beginning, you highlight the headings that you have, and from your um, layout tab, I'm just gonna drag this up a wee bit, you get an option at the end where it says, repeat header rows. Now, just to prove I haven't done this yet, Look on page two, I have no headings. Agreed, yeah. So I'm gonna highlight my headings and I'm gonna go back to my table tools layout at the end and repeat header row. And if I scroll down, hey presto, I have got my headings at the top of page two. Now as I say, if you have a break in your table, that will not work. Now, another thing that people don't realize uh, you can do in Microsoft Word is to do like a sum calculation in a table. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to click at the very end of my table in the last cell of my table. I'm gonna press the tab key to create a new row. I'm tab and tab and again. My cursor is in a new cell at the bottom of my table. So I want to add up, let's say I want to add up all these figures. Again, I'm in my layout tab. The very last command is formula. If I click on formula, your sum function comes in with the word above in brackets after it and simply okay that. See the way that has added up all my figures? A lot of people don't realize you can do that. Now, let's say for the hell of it, that figure there, 15, let's say that 15 should be 150. So I'm going to adjust that figure. So obviously my total, now this is not Excel, folks. I mean, you can't literally hope that it, your, your total will automatically adjust because it won't. But if you go down to the total at the bottom, shortcut key, press the F9 key. Now look at my total before I do. If I press F9, do you notice how the total updates? F9 is your update key. Really, really useful, folks. So that's a couple of wee tricks with the um, tables. That's using your auto fit, auto fit contents, and auto fit window. Those are really, really useful. The other thing as well to uh, repeat the headings at the top. Okay. Now, I'm going to open another document. Um, okay, and I'll share it with you a wee second. <clears throat> so, this is just um, a little Word document. Now, I want to cover a few things in this. Right, I have a heading here at the top of this document. Now, I want to apply that same heading, that same format, to a couple other headings further down my page. So rather than me guessing what size font, what type of font, what color font um, that I want to apply in the other headings, I'm going to use my copy and format painter. So literally, highlight the text that you want to copy. I'm going to use Control and C to copy. You can go up to your copy if you want. Now, what I am going to use from the clipboard group, I'm going to use the Format Painter. Now, the Format Painter will paint on the format that you've just copied. So if I click once in the Format Painter, 
Notice how my pointer has changed my little eye beam with a little paintbrush on it. That's your format painter. So if I, I can click from the left hand side or I can physically drag across the next heading that I want to apply that format to. So I'm going to click once from the outside from the margin here. See? So I've copied that format and I've applied it to another heading. Now I'm going to undo that a wee second. Control and Z. Now, by clicking on your format painter, it will allow you to format just the once. I'm going to show you how you can format a number of times. So again, highlight the text that you want to um, copy the format from. So copy, Control and C, or you can choose copy. Go to your format painter, but instead of clicking once on it, double click on it. So one, two, I double clicked on my format painter. Now, that will allow me to click there, 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 and there. Okay, now my format painter is still applied to my pointer here. So if I'm finished with it, if I press my escape key, that will remove the format painter. Okay, that's actually quite useful, folks, as well. Now, another option that people struggle with, excuse me a wee second, I'm gonna take a, there's a wee drop of vodka in here. Just for the nerves, you know, I wish. Right, another thing that people struggle with um, is images inside a document. So, it's one of the questions that I'm asked quite a bit when I'm out doing training in business. Um, that maybe there's like a report produced and there's pictures through the report and they'll say, how do I change my picture without messing everything up? Right, so let's say I have this picture here, but I want to replace with another picture. Now, this is what most people do. They click on it, they delete it, they then go to, well, they don't even go to insert picture. Okay, and literally we'll say from this device or from this file. Now, if I go into my, see how organized I am? Not, um, okay. So let's say I want to replace with this picture. Now, my document's up the left a bit, isn't it? So I'm gonna control and say to undo undo and undo. Okay, so we'll have our picture. I want to replace with another picture. Okay, what you do, you literally right click, you say change picture, you say from file. You then go, now the picture that I'm putting in is a different shape from the one that's there. Now, it puts it in at the same height. It's a wider picture, but it doesn't mess up my uh, text. So I'll undo that a wee second, you see? No, I'll redo. Okay. So, that's my new picture. And nothing else, everything else is laterally aligned the way it should be. Now, that's where people struggle. They end up deleting a the picture, they go to insert picture, they end up with a big picture and they end up trying and resizing it and getting it back to the same, the same place and the same format. Now, when you add a picture, a brand new picture, and I'm gonna delete this, okay? When you add a picture in to any document, your picture comes in with the default format of inline with text. Now, it basically sits in between a couple of lines of text. Now, if you wanna move that picture freely around your document, you literally go to your little layout command to the right of the picture and choose whatever option. Let's say I normally choose square. And if I wanna resize my picture, you'll notice how my text is wrapped what's called squarely around my picture. Okay, 
but if you're replacing the picture, you literally will replace the picture, okay, with the original, with the same layout option. You don't have to go in and apply a square option if you're replacing a picture that's already there. Now, we've got our document here. Um, let's say I want to, let, in this document, I want to highlight, this is all about the O'Neill, okay, the O'Neill's in um, O'Neill Castle in Dungannon here. Now, let's say I want to emphasize the word O'Neill throughout this document. Now, this could be a, a report about your company or the company or organization you work from. And you maybe want to emphasize the name of the company that you work from. Now, I'm not going to manually go and look for a particular word. I'm going to use the option for find and replace. Now, the shortcut for find and replace is the F5 key. So it doesn't matter where you are in the document. If I press F5, I'm going to go to replace. I'm going to type O'Neill, where it says find what. In the replace with, I'm going to type O'Neill. I have the same word in both places. Now, the only thing I'm going to do differently, in the replace with box, my cursor's flashing there. The shortcut for bold is control and B. So I'm going to bold the replace with O'Neill. I'm then going to say replace all. And OK that. And close. So do you see in your document any time the word O'Neill is there? It's basically bold. Now, let's say I'm doing a wee a report. And I want this first part, okay, on a page of its own. And I want from this um, heading, I want this moved on to a new page. Now again, what most of you will do, you'll end up doing enter, 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 enter. And if I put my show hide on, that shows me that you've used enter, 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 enter. So that's not what we do. I'm going to uh, undo that, Control and Z. Put your cursor at the location where you want moved on to a new page. Hold down your Control key and press the Enter key. That gives me a page break. Now, again, put my show hide on and there's my page break. So if I don't want my page break, I literally just highlight the page break and delete it. Folks, that's really, really useful in terms of your page breaking. Control and enter. Right, so I'm going to undo that. So we'll keep that all in one page. Now, headers and footers. Another thing that people struggle with. Headers, where you have, it could be a piece of text or it could be like a logo or an image that you have um, at the top of the document on each page within the document, that's your header. The footer is basically at the bottom. Now, if I want to be a wee bit awkward about my headers and footers, I'm going to go to insert and from the header and footer uh, group, what I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose footer here. And I'm going to, I tend not to use some of these preset ones, okay? I'm going to use the option where it says edit footer because I want to put my own in. Now, let's say I want to put in the word report on O'Neill Castle, for example. Okay. Now, if I press my tab key, that will take me to the center of my footer. Now, I'm going to show you the mistake that a lot of people make at this point. They'll maybe put a, a footer in and then they'll say, oh, I want to num number my pages. So they end up going to your page number. Okay, now if you do that, and let's say I want a page number at the bottom of my page, 
and say I want it in the center. Now, bear in mind, I have text already here. So I'm gonna choose that. Notice what happens. Your text disappears. You've basically um, chosen the page number and the page number option has basically replaced the text that you have there. So I'm gonna undo that, Control and Z. If you want your page number along with another piece of text or other pieces of text, um, now, I'm going to leave the center one at the minute for my page number. I'm going to tab over and I'm going to say in what month? April. We're in April 2020, okay? So if I go back into the center, I've just my cursor. Now, if I want to add an automatic page number to my footer, what I use, I use what's called quick parts. Now, I'm in my header and footer design tab. Remember the on demand, my design tab. Now, we're going to what's called quick parts. See the insert group, quick parts, and I'm going to field. A field is a piece of text um, that will give information about the document. Now, I'm going to, without actually scrolling down, I'm going to type the letter P for page. And I'm simply going to OK that. That will put an automatic page number in. If I look, number two, OK. So my advice is when you're adding um, a footer, maybe two, maybe three pieces of text within the footer area, always use your quick parts for the likes of a page number. OK, and I'm just going to double click in the middle of the document just to close that. Okay. Folks, anybody, any questions? Yeah, that was brilliant. Thank you. I, I was going to do mail merge with you. Have you all time if I, if I do a wee quick mail merge with you? Yeah, that'd be great. Would yeah. that be okay? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's something, it's something that people, you know, in business and that they would use and a lot of people, you know, struggle with it. And I'm mm -hmm. going to show you how easy it is to use. Um, so again, I'm going to open another um, document. Now, this is basically the um, what you would have received via email from me about tonight's um, training. So I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to share it with you. Okay, so that's basically what you got from me um, in terms of your email. And that's literally, I use Mail Merge to send this to you. Okay, now, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off. I would have the letter prepared or the email. Go to the Mailings tab, start Mail Merge, and choose whatever type of object that you want to create, whether it's a letter whether it's email, okay? Um, we'll say letter. Letter probably would be the, uh, well, not nowadays, I suppose email is the same. Doesn't matter which one we choose. I'm gonna say a letter, okay? So letter or email, it really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna do a letter. Now, I'll put, I'll just add today's date on this. So 21st April, 2020, okay? And then I'm going to be putting uh, people's uh, details in here, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say, right, okay, let's go and select our address list. Well, the address list I have will be just a spreadsheet. So I'm going to go to select recipients, use an existing list, go to wherever your uh, address list is stored. I'm going back to my online training okay and i'm going to open a spreadsheet called personal details now you don't physically see it okay now the next thing i'm going to do is to take the fields or the headings that i have on my spreadsheet or my address list that i want to merge with this letter so you see the insert merge field button. There is a top part of it. There is a bottom part of it. I always use the bottom part. Okay. Choose the bottom part of the insert merge field. 
here's the list of fields that I have in my spreadsheet. So, hang on, I've probably chosen the wrong bloody one. Give me one wee second. I'm just checking the, the, the original um, address list. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I'm just going to save a copy of this, folks. Just bear with me. So this is just literally a list of names, addresses, and email addresses. Okay, so I'm going to close that. So, um, okay, I'm going to say, I'm just going to go back and choose the next list, or the proper list, data. Okay, online training, just my Microsoft Word and open. And 605, it's probably gonna give me the same thing. It doesn't really matter anyhow. Right, so insert merge field, it's only showing three of these, okay? So I choose my first field I wanna use. The address field and town. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a look and see how my letter is looking. So if I choose the option to see where it says preview results, mm -hmm. if I click on that, now just imagine I have a first name, etc. and that is pulling up a, an old um, address list. So that's what's wrong here. So you'd have the address. Mm -hmm. If I'm happy with my spacing and everything else, okay, if I delete one of those, my final step is finish a merge. Now, if you're using this as an email, at the very start, you would have chose email, and at the end, you would say send email. But I'm gonna use this as a document, as a letter. So I'm gonna say edit individual documents. Merge records, that's all records, and okay that. Now, if you look down at the very bottom, that's showing me I have 19 pages. So that's the first person, second person. Now these are dummy, dummy names and dummy addresses, folks. There's no confidential information here. That okay? That's basically a mail merge document. If I notice a mistake in it, <coughs> and I've merged by 2000 records, what I can do, I can say file and close, okay? and don't save, that closes the pre-merge one. And that takes me back to my original one. Mm. I can make whatever changes I want there. And again, check it, preview it, and then say, right, okay, do my finish and merge again. Edit individual documents, and okay that. That's a mail merge letter. That's Folks, I know if I've literally, it's a taster. Yeah, yeah. night of things that you can do in Microsoft Word um, giving you a few shortcuts. Has anybody any questions? No, that was great. No. no. I actually wanted to know um, when you're mail merging an email, uh -huh. just really random, yep. um, are you able to actually put attachments onto the emails that you're sending or? Um, in terms of being honest, I would only ever email just the, yeah. letter, the letter itself yeah me too but um i came across it today just whenever i was doing my work and i was like oh don't know how to do this and possibly and, um, setting up possibly setting up um like a template email yeah. initially with the attachment mm -hmm. already on it and then using that template when you go to do the merge yeah you, you know you get around that huh? But the email is brilliant, being able to merge that because, you know, if so you're using email up, oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, where I work, we've got like obviously hundreds of students that we have to yeah. email, like, and yeah. obviously you want to personalize it and stuff. It just makes it, <laughs> bam, works in like a minute. Exactly. Because I mean, with yours, you know, with the email that you all would have received, I would have had good morning. And then after that, and from the spreadsheet I would have, I would have put yeah. your first name in there mm -hmm. and then just emailed and, you know, it would have gone out that way instantly. So, yeah, you know, it makes it so much easier. Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> but it looks so personal. 
It is. It, it, yeah. it is. You know, when you have somebody's name in it, it definitely does. Yeah. Folks, what are you all going to go back and try now? <laughs> yeah, no, this is going to try now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just going to...